Hello and welcome to this lecture on client-server architecture. This is actually a combination of two lectures in a course that I have. And if you find this information useful and bear with me through the end of this lecture, I'll tell you how you can find the other 97 lectures over 13 and a half hours of content about web programming for GIS applications. So we're going to jump right in and talk about how programming for the web is different than programming for a single user desktop environment. The term client-server refers to a type of computer architecture where you have multiple clients accessing one server. There can be hundreds, thousands, possibly even millions, many, many clients accessing one server. Clients can be using different browsers, different operating systems, different screen sizes, etc. It might be a computer, it might be a phone, it might be a tablet. Data is stored on the server and requested by the client. User interaction occurs only on the client. Data access is handled by the server, and data processing can occur on either end. As a result, you need to know how to program on the client as well as on the server. More importantly, you need to know when to handle things on the client and when to handle things on the server, and how to communicate between them. Servers process requests and return a result and then clients do something with that result. This is just like a server in a restaurant. You, the client, tell the server what you want. That's the request. The server delivers it to you. That's the result. And then you do something with it. That's client-side processing. This requires things to happen on both ends. In order to process your request, the server informs the cook of your order, and the cook prepares the food from scratch, and then the server delivers it to the client. This happens behind the scene. The details are unknown and unimportant to the client. This is server-side processing. Once the food is delivered, the client still has to cut the steak, put salad dressing on the salad, and spoon it into his mouth. This is client-side processing. An important consideration is that while there are multiple clients, there's usually only one server and the server has to handle multiple clients simultaneously. So let's talk about this in a little more detail and what it means with web application development. In client-server architecture, you have a client, and in terms of the web, that's going to be your browser. And that client understands HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All modern browsers understand these three languages. The client makes a request to the server, often through a technology known as AJAX. The server doesn't understand HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. It understands different programming languages. So the one that we'll be discussing in this class will be PHP. It's a very common one. It's open source. It's used in over 80% of client-server web applications. There are others you might have heard of, like ASP.NET if you work with Microsoft products. Java has been a very popular one. Node, which is JavaScript actually running on the server, and there are others as well. These are the main ones. The web server then makes a request from the database. That request usually comes in the form of a SQL statement, SQL. Now, there are many types of databases available out there too. PostgreSQL is a very popular open source one, especially for geospatial applications, and that's the one that we'll be using in this class. But if you work in Microsoft environments, you might use SQL Server. Oracle is another very popular one. MySQL is worth mentioning. It's another open source database program. It's very popular. If you take classes in general web application development, you'll probably be using MySQL. However, PostgreSQL has a lot of advantages for geospatial applications, and we'll talk about these in more detail later. The database interprets that SQL statement and returns something back to the web server. Usually what it's returning is data. It might also be just something that says, hey, I finished this request. So then the web server, in your PHP code, you can read that data, process it, and return it back to the client as HTML, CSS, and or JavaScript. And again, returning that result usually uses a technology known as AJAX. As promised, in this lecture, we're going to talk about some of the major and minor components that make up a web application. In the last lecture, we talked a little bit about the client. In terms of web applications, when we say client, we're referring to your browser. So that's going to be Chrome or Internet Explorer or Safari or whatever browser you use. 
All modern browsers understand HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and these three work together to form a web page. On the server, you also have some type of programming language. There are several server-side programming languages available. You're only going to choose one. We're going to work with PHP. That's the most common one. It's used in over 80% of web applications. And the third major component is a database. Databases come in two flavors, either SQL or NoSQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it's the way that we interact with a database. We can create data, we can change data, delete data, and maybe most importantly, we can retrieve just the specific data that we want. It's been around for a long time. I remember writing SQL code in the 80s when I was still in high school, and that hasn't changed very much. We're going to use PostgreSQL in this class. It's another open source SQL database, and the reason that we're using it is because it has an extension called PostGIS, and PostGIS works really well with the database to handle geospatial data and geospatial analysis. NoSQL databases are sometimes also called document databases. They've become popular in the past five or six years for a number of reasons. They can store data much more flexibly. You're not restricted to just data that can fit into a table. They can work well with web applications. They store data very similarly to the way that JavaScript stores objects. And we'll talk about that a lot more in future lectures. There are also some minor components. As I said, we have the client and we have the server. We need to be able to communicate between the client and the server. AJAX is a group of technologies that's become very popular in the past decade. AJAX allows you to send data back and forth kind of behind the scenes with no need to redraw your web page. And we'll be using that extensively to get GIS data from the server and put it onto a map. And finally, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And JSON is a text-based data storage format. And being text-based, that's important because that makes it easy to send information back and forth between the client and server. And both JavaScript and PHP and most other server-side languages have methods for creating JSON data and reading JSON data. You might also hear terms such as libraries, APIs, and frameworks. And these are all variations on a theme. It's all code that somebody else has written that you have access to. So you can use somebody else's code instead of reinventing the wheel and writing everything yourself. On the client, you might have heard things like jQuery, which is a very popular JavaScript framework. It makes it much easier to manipulate the document object model, and we're going to talk about that a lot more too. There are also some server-side frameworks, especially if you're using PHP. So you might have heard Cake, or CodeIgniter, or Laravel. We're not going to talk about them in this class, but just know that they're out there, and if you see those terms, they're a framework that allows you to build web applications using PHP. And finally, we're going to talk about mapping components. I'm sure we've all seen Google Maps, and we've seen plenty of web pages that have Google Maps embedded in them. Google Maps has an API that you can use to add your data to a map and embed that in your web page. We won't discuss Google Maps much in this class. We're going to be working mostly with Leaflet, which is an open source web mapping component. And Leaflet doesn't restrict you to just Google background maps. Open Layers is another open source web mapping component. It's been around longer than Leaflet. It's still popular for a lot of reasons. But for right now, just know that Leaflet and Open Layers are both open source JavaScript APIs that run in your browser and allow you to place a map in a web page, just like Google Maps. The Esri JavaScript API does similar things as Google Maps, Leaflet, and Open Layers. However, it's a proprietary API. It's optimized to work well with Esri ArcGIS server. And if you have access to an ArcGIS server, you may want to look into that. However, for this class, we're going to stick with the open source method. Turf.js is another JavaScript API that runs in your client. The purpose of Turf is to allow you to do some basic spatial analysis. So Turf has routines to do intersections and calculate areas and that kind of thing. Finally, PostGIS is an extension to the PostgreSQL database. So PostGIS lives on your server. And PostGIS allows you to access GIS data and load it into the client or do some analysis with it. With the knowledge that we have so far, using only client-side programming methods, we can create a web map and put our own data on it, respond to user input, perform relatively complex spatial analyses. 
Now, the example I showed you wasn't particularly complex, but I hope you saw what might be possible. The caveat is that the data is relatively static. It's not completely static. I showed you how you can add data using QGIS. However, the flow of information is one way, from the server to the client. What we cannot do is develop an application where the clients can create, edit, or delete data and send it back to the server so that it can be seen by others. To do that, we need a database server. And that's what the remainder of this course will be about. Okay, if you made it this far, hopefully you found this material interesting. I hope you did. Then I want you to know that this is just one course in a course that I created called Introduction to Web Programming for GIS Applications. This course also includes 97 other lectures, which is over 13 and a half hours of video about the basics of web programming with a specific focus on GIS applications. This course is available on the Udemy platform. Like all Udemy courses, it can be viewed anytime at your pleasure. It can also be viewed anywhere. You can download the course to a mobile device like a tablet or even your phone, so you can watch it even if you don't have internet available. You can watch it in the middle of the ocean or on top of a remote mountain if you want. And it's available for life, so you can take as long as you want to finish it. Just to show you my appreciation for watching this video, I'd like to offer you 65% off the course. It's normally $100, but if you use the coupon code GeoJSON, all in capital letters, you can watch the entire course for $35. The URL is here, but you don't need to type the entire thing in. You can just go to Udemy.com and search for WebGIS, and this course will show up. I don't think it's the cheapest, but it's a lot longer and in-depth than the others. You can also check out my blog, Geospatial Brainstorming, for more information on GIS, and especially WebGIS.